change forever, though, on August 21st, 2007, when after a post-graduation party, and I'd been drinking, and then I'm about a quarter mile away from my own house when I go too fast around a curve, and my rear tire hits the curb and spins across the road, and we wrapped around a tree at about 60 miles an hour. I guess I can't feel my feet, I don't really know. You know, I, I, I probably can feel my toes, maybe. Not very much, but just a little. And it's that little hope that I guess you hold on to. Um, and no one wants to break that for you. And eventually, you just kind of have to put it all together and realize, okay, this is how it's going to be for life. You know, you spend so much time thinking, oh, what if, what if, what if, you know, what I would do to change it. And one day this last summer, I got a email from a former UC Berkeley student. He told me, hey, why don't you give, uh, get in touch with this professor? I heard he's doing some really interesting research that you might be interested in. So uh, I go over to his lab, and the lab, I mean, it's a, it's a crazy place when the first time you ever walk into it, and there are all these mechanical exoskeletons everywhere, and it feels like you're just walking into a set of a sci-fi film. It, and basically, Kaz is there, and he, uh, he tells me that he wants, he has a dream that he wants to see me walk again. Is there any way to create machines for people with mobility disorder to become involved, to do their job, and uh, to take care of their families, to enjoy the life as much as they did when, uh, when they were mobile? And this is the one thing that I and you know, pretty much any person with paraplegia would do anything for. But yet the one thing that pretty much no one can help you. Yeah. I don't have the ability to fix the spinal cord, but I do have a pretty good ability to make, make machines and make machines that are really good at what they do. The, the, the target, the, what we're looking for in Austin projects is to create uh, accessible exoskeleton systems for, for, for everyday use, something very simple something high performance but with very low cost and then we we basically start from the problem and then go from there i'm passionate about it like i want to find a solution and i think there is a solution out there and then I, I basically just like think about the problem everywhere i go and then if you think about it for long enough eventually you come up with a solution no so i've been uh, developing the code for this robot for for a bit over a year now so it needs to be very reliable, 100% um, of the time. Failure is never acceptable. And that's what makes our project so sexy, is it's, it's alive, it's real. And my job is basically to help them transform this computer model and help show what's going to really happen to it in real life. This exoskeleton might seem uh, rather revolutionary to that, to some, but I don't see it. I see a natural progression from the same glasses and hearing it and a prosthetic device to something a little bigger, maybe. You know what I think we should do? I think we should try. I want, I'd really like to walk across the stage at graduation. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a massive milestone that we've set for ourselves. And I bet you no one has ever graduated with an exoskeleton on before. I bet you I'll be the first human being ever to do that. So the suit needs to be functioning flawlessly at that point. And uh, we're a long way from that, that, uh, that day here. Hey, whoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. But do one, one, one step. step. One step and, and hold. Stop. Yeah. I don't think it's going to disengage on the uh. way. Okay. Jason, could you grab the chair? Yeah, no, I, I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. We're standing by, Austin. <laughs> that is not what I'm used to. Alright, what well, was it? Lots of, lots of load on your harness. Well, now, see you guys working and I take a break? Yeah. Yeah, man. A lot of what is constantly being done here is problem solving, you know. We're on our third knee because, you know, initially something was designed and then you have to make it better and better and better. Good, our, our Hail Mary knee design here. I, I, I don't think you can expect it to be perfect after the first shot, especially in what we're doing because not a lot of people have done this before. 
the point is we got I gotta get ahead here somehow because we're breaking stuff faster than we are testing. Let's see, it's yeah. Tuesday, so we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days. The hope is with this exoskeleton is that it can help negate those negative health effects that's brought on by sitting in a wheelchair. Beyond just the health side of it though, there's also the, the mental thing, like I said, being in a wheelchair. I can't tell you, I mean, at first, it's the big things you miss. But as time goes on, it's not those things that you truly miss. It's the little things. The little things like being able to hug someone, hug your mom, stamp and hug your mom. You know, walking across the stage to accept a diploma. I've done lots of, lots of walking, you know, with the machine, but I can't imagine that moment still. I can't imagine what emotion it's going to bring out of me. It's going to be one of probably the most defining moments of my life. And having the opportunity, knowing that there is a possibility for these to happen again, that truly is beyond, you know, beyond a, beyond a price. That's. Uh, that's truly, it's magical. Bianca Gandalf. Gina Hey, how are we doing? Double check? Double check? Knees lock? Knees lock? No, okay. It truly makes one rethink that word impossible because that's surely what I would have said I would have said that's impossible and to think that that's where we are today it really makes me much more reluctant to ever use that word again <laughs>